let the words of my mouth and the meditation of the heart of every one assembled here be acceptable in your sight o lord our rock and our redeemer amen please be seated once again god has given me this privilege to preach the word of god on the sunday morning i thank your pastor reverend dev putran for giving me this opportunity how many of you would like to join the barbecue on the beach would like to join the barbecue on the beach not with me but with the risen lord jesus and if you want to know about it please turn with to the gospel portion that was read to us from the gospel according to st john chapter 21 which is found on page 1154 barbecue on the beach with the risen lord why for meeting eating and chatting e meeting eating and chatting this passage in this passage you will find the third appearance of the risen lord as recorded by john third appearance to the disciples first he met them in the closed room when thomas was not there only 10 disciples were there and then secondly for the sake of thomas the next week he appeared which was the portion read to us last sunday after one week after easter and today we are given this passage of john 21st chapter and if you read luke chapter 5 you will find some similarity the first 14 verses and luke chapter 5 1 to 11 there also you read about fishing and the whole night we have toiled and caught nothing that was the report given by peter and jesus says now throw your net on the other side and they were able to catch more fish on that night according to luke's version in chapter 5 Peter in that first appearance of Luke chapter 5 where he was called to ministry by our Lord Jesus Christ he was given the task of fisher of men and women he was catching the fish the lord said do not be afraid you are now only catching fish i'll make you fisher of men and women boys and girls and he followed jesus we know the story but now you will find that the disciples had gone for fishing why because simon peter only said verse 3 said to the other six disciples who were with him i am going fishing would like to join me i am going fishing they said to him we will go with you they went out and got into the boat so it was peter's plan why jesus appeared to the disciples twice as recorded by john on the easter evening itself he appeared to them when they were in the closed room and again he appeared to for the sake of thomas he appeared again appeared again and gave his vision of the vision of the risen lord the next sunday first day of the week but again the disciples had gone for fishing why have they back backslided have they gone astray maybe but peter and others might have thought after resurrection jesus appears and disappears appears and disappears and is not to be seen by the public is not showing himself to the priest high priest or the jewish leaders elders and the people who raise their hands saying we will vote for his crucifixion crucify him crucify him those people have not seen him the risen lord and how are we going to tell them that jesus had risen from the dead if he has not appeared to the public therefore 
better we seek some profession with which we are familiar in order to for survival for feeding our family members we cannot completely depend on jesus christ as he appears and disappears only to those whom he loved earlier or those who loved him earlier the disciples mary magdalene and other women therefore let us go for fishing and the other six disciples who were whose names are mentioned there said yes we will also join you and they went for fishing so first scene we see disciples on the sea in the boat first they said in verse 3 they went out got into the boat but that night they caught nothing they caught nothing so it was a fruitless effort the whole night they toiled and could not catch any fish their efforts were fruitless and the boat also remained empty without any fish that itself is an indication of their empty lives because they have deviated though the lord said in the preceding chapter 20th chapter when he appeared for the first time to the disciples on the same evening when he rose from the dead peace be with you and then he said to them as the father has sent me even so i am sending you verse 21 and breathe on them receive the holy spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven they are forgiven them if you withhold forgiveness from any it is withhold withheld that's what he said but these disciples went again for fishing the profession which we they were familiar and to the galilean sea which was a familiar space for place for them and having caught nothing they got very much disappointed disillusioned and disgusted so it was a night of total failure fruitless effort empty boat and night of total failure they could catch nothing again in verse 5 when jesus asked them children do you have any fish they answered him no nothing then the risen lord on the shore first disciples on the sea now the risen lord on the shore the risen lord appears to them verse 4 just as day was breaking at the dawn jesus stood on the shore yet the disciples did not know that it was jesus now the risen lord takes the initiative to appear before these disciples who had gone to their old profession or vocation of fishing he could have said these people who had deserted me while i was caught by the soldiers these people who have left me alone to suffer why should i appear before them i have already appeared twice why should i do it now the third time they are they have become unreliable they have become not trustworthy but jesus taking the initiative appeared before the disciples for the third time risen lord's initiative to meet the disciples who had backslidden that is the magnanimity of our lord risen lord that is the greatness of our risen lord even when we go astray he comes to meet us even when we leave him when we backslide he is there to appear before us because of his love god so loved the world that he gave his son and the son so loves you and me that he comes to you and me again and again even if we forget him if we forget his words even when we go astray 
that is the magnanimity of our Lord. And he also appears when they were fishing. They were diligent in their fishing profession. It is often in the midst of our daily work that God comes to us. God comes to us in the midst of our daily work. When we are committed to our task, committed to our work, our profession. How many of us can truly say we are committed to our profession? Most of us are in the secular profession. Are we loyal? Are we really committed? Are we faithful? These disciples were diligent. And God, the Lord Jesus, the risen Lord, appears to them in the midst of their daily work. We think that he would come only in the sacred places of church or temple or synagogue and he would come only to appear before the sacred people, the priests? No. Even to the common people, even to the fishermen, even to the tax collector or um, like Zacchaeus or Matthew, he will appear. He will come. So, in whatever profession you may be, whatever might be your occupation, the Lord wants to meet you where you are. He comes there. That is your familiar place. Your office, your company or factory or your school or college, with what, whichever might be. In that familiar place, in your familiar profession or occupation, the Lord comes there to meet you. And then, thirdly we find, these disciples were sad. Why sad? Because they could not catch anything. And their efforts did not produce any result. Their labor, their toil have become waste. But he appeared to them to change their condition and bring transformation. He appeared to them to change their condition and bring transformation. Why does the Lord come? In order to make his presence known to us, to change our condition in whatever pitiable condition, desperate condition we might find ourselves. The Lord is here. The risen Lord is here. And then thirdly we find that Jesus' address and his instruction. Jesus' address and his instruction. What is his address? How did he address the disciples at that time? Verse 5. Verse 5. Jesus said to them, Children, children, do you have any fish? He addressed them as children. Isn't that something amazing? Because in the preceding chapter, 28th chapter, when he appeared to Mary Magdalene for the first time after his resurrection, the first appearance, what did he say to Mary? Verse 17, do, do not cling to me, Mary, for I have not, not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers. Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Go to my brothers. The disciples were called as brothers. Now they are addressed as children. Why? Because they should know that he is God. Jesus is God. Because in John 1.12, John writes, To those who believe in him, to those who accept him, he has given the power to become the children of God. He has given the authority to become the children of God. That's what John writes in first chapter, verse 12. And therefore, now Jesus addresses them as children. What an affectionate term. He addresses you and me, my child. Are you going astray? Where are you now? Where are you now? Do you think I have abandoned you? I will not be with you? I'll be with you till the end of the world, end of the age. That's what he promised in 28th chapter, Matthew. 
when he gave the great commission. I am born as Emmanuel in order to let you know that God is with you at all times, in all places, in all conditions. Therefore, he addressed. And then he said, he asked, have you have any fish? They answered him, no. Empty. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to pull it, haul it in because of the quantity of the fish. Because of the quantity of the fish. They never expected that they would catch so much fish because it was a fruitless effort. It was a night of failure and therefore they were so sad. They were depressed. But here comes Jesus addresses them as children and then gives them instruction. Now, cast your net on the right side and they were able to catch more fish. He was a carpenter's son, no doubt. A carpenter's son insecting the fishermen and telling them where they can find fish. They would have said, you are a carpenter's son. What do you know about fishing? We are born here on the shore of Galilee, we know from our childhood days, we have been trained, and therefore it is our familiar profession, and we don't, not, we don't want anybody to insect us. But when he said, because till such time, they did not know it was Jesus. That's what John writes. Only when John the, the apostle pointed to Peter, it must be the Lord afterwards. Verse 7, then the dis that disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. So they immediately obeyed the instruction of the Lord and were able to catch 153 fish. That's what the record says. 153. There it was from failure to success. Their failure was turned into success and their empty boat was full emptiness into fullness. Failure into success and emptiness into fullness. Today, have you come as a person who has been disappointed, disillusioned, with despair, with not knowing what to do in the future? All my attempts have failed, maybe. I don't know what to do in the future. But here comes the risen Lord. Tells you, my child, don't worry. I am here in your midst. I am ready to give you instruction what you should do. So that you could feel the fullness. So it would, it would be a journey from sadness to gladness. Weeping to rejoicing. From bitterness to sweetness from emptiness to fullness. Listen to what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more exceedingly or abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. To him who is able to do far more exceedingly, abundantly, than we ask or imagine or think. Did the disciples at that, on that day think that they are going to catch 153 fish? And the net was full of fish. Verse 8. Dragging the net full of fish. For the Lord is able to perform miracles in your life and my life. If you have entered the church with disappointment, with discouragement, disillusioned as a disillusioned person, here is the risen Lord. And then, what happens? The charcoal of fire, the Lord's provision, the Lord provides. Verse 9. When they got out on the land, they saw charcoal fire in place. 
charcoal fire in the place. He is the Lord of provision. He prepares a table. Barbecue. That's what I said. Barbecue on the beach. And Peter was reminded, Peter was reminded about the fire before which he denied the Lord three times, which is recorded in the 18th chapter of the same John's Gospel, verse 18 and verses 25 to 27. He denied the Lord three times. And here, now Peter is made to sit in before, before the charcoal fire in order to warm himself. He was found seated along with the soldiers and others, the servants of the high priest palace, and denied the Lord three times. But here he is again made to sit before the charcoal fire. It is the Lord's fire. That was the world's fire. It is the Lord's fire. So he could remember and then he has to, he was convicted within himself. That is why you will find the term, he was grieved. He was grieved when the Lord asked him, verse 17 of the same chapter, 21st chapter, Peter was grieved. Why? Because he was feeling guilty. Sitting before the charcoal fire, he was feeling guilty. I sat before the charcoal fire at the high priest's place and then denied him three times. Now I am sitting before in the beach, the charcoal fire lit by the Lord. And the disciples could feel the warmth of the heated flames. Not only the warmth of heated flames, but also the warmth of the risen Lord's presence. The warmth of the presence of the risen Lord in their midst. That quickly dispelled not only the cold of the early morning, but also of the dampness of their spirits. It was able to dispel the dampness of their spirit. So Jesus always brings warmth in your life and my life. To give us a feeling of well-being, to shelter us in addition to provision, providing fish and bread. See what is recorded in the same chapter with verse 9. They saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus told them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So the breakfast was ready. Made ready by Jesus. Are you sailing in the boat of failure? Same boat as the disciples sailed? Emptiness? Do you feel empty within yourself? And do you feel you are let down? Now, the risen Lord is in our midst and says, My child, lift your eyes and see me. I am here in your midst. You are unable to recognize me. Why? Because like Mary who could not recognize Jesus but addressed him as gardener, as we find in the 20th chapter. First, she thought it was a gardener. Isn't it? You are unable to recognize me. May the Lord open our eyes to see his presence, to feel the warmth of his presence, the risen Lord's presence, today as we take part in the worship service. He says, my child, I have something for your future. I have something for your future. What did he do? Then he asked the next chatting. You will find that Simon Peter, he asked three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And made him reply three times. Peter was grieved. Why he was grieved? Because his conscience was pricking at saying, you have denied three times. You have denied three times. So, corresponding to the triple denial, is raising the question three times and making Peter to declare three times. Corresponding to the triple denial by Peter. 
and Peter finally says, Lord, you know everything that I love you. You know that I love you, Lord, verse 17. And today he's asking, my dear child, do you love me? Do you love me? I have come seeking you. I have come because the love for you has driven me to your place, has brought me to your place. I am ready to meet you where you are and make you to love me so that you can see a bright future. And he gave him a task. First, feed my lambs, then tend my sheep, and then feed my sheep. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and then feed my sheep. And the, now there is a promotion. What is the promotion? He was a fisherman and he said, I'll make you fishers of men and women in fifth chapter. Now Jesus says, I'll make you a shepherd. Fisherman, given the promotion of becoming the shepherd, shepherd of the church, shepherd of the church, shepherd of the body of Christ. Feed my lambs, the children of the church. And then tend my sheep, the congregation members, and feed them with the word of God. That is the responsibility. A task has been given to Peter. And today the Lord is ready to give you and me a task. If we keep our ears sensitive when he calls you and me, my child, my child, do you love me? And then he says, now this is the task I am giving you. The new task and new power will be given to you. When the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, you shall receive power to do what I want you to do. What I have commanded you to do. What I expect you to do. You may not have power to do that. But I will fill you with the Spirit. That's the promise. Are we ready this morning, my beloved? So barbecue on the beach with the risen Lord in order to call you and me as children and give you and me a task to do and give, provide a brighter future, brighter future. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message. We thank you, Lord, for the lessons that we have learned through your meeting, eating, and chatting. You are the Lord who comes to us taking the initiative, even though we don't call you. We don't invite you sometimes. You come as an unexpected visitor. But that is your magnanimity and greatness, Lord. We realize that. How many times we have failed to recognize your presence as the disciples did, they could not recognize Jesus. Our eyes are closed because of our worldliness, because of our filthiness, because of our carnal mindedness. Forgive us, Lord. Open our eyes to see the risen Lord in our presence. And keep our ears sensitive, make our ears sensitive to listen to his voice and to help us to surrender our will to fulfill the task that the risen Lord gives us this morning, providing us a brighter future. In Jesus' name we ask.